With the latest update, we got quite a few new tools on our hands and items to use. And I wanted to find out how impactful these new items and resources are to the average player and how they are influenced by these new additions. So in the Monkey Islands, you could find quite a few things. The biggest, most notable ones that I would mention are banana bushes. Whether or not they're good is subjective, obviously, as most things in this list are. But in my opinion, they're not the best. The point at which you get a sizable amount isn't really great, and they're only useful for a small amount of moments, in my opinion. They're fine for sanity food, and they're fine for characters' favorite foods. But at the same time, sanity's always been one of those stats where it's like, sure, you probably are going to have to deal with it at some point. But if you do something like put on a TAM, or just have a bunch of cacti on you, or just have a way to get a bunch of green mushrooms, then sanity isn't really too impactful. You already have things in the game that are a bit more reliable for sanity food, but having an addition is always nice, I suppose. But banana bushes in and of themselves aren't really impactful. The main benefit that I see in this current update is you get to give them to the monkey queen, which I think that is a pretty good use for them, seeing as the rewards that you get from them are also pretty good. On the Monkey Island, you'll also find Broken Machinery, which is an alternative way to get gears and gold in the form of trinkets, that being the frazzled wires. And they're all right, but the fact that they're on Monkey Island can be a hindrance. The dock blueprint is what you use in order to learn how to make docks, which docks in and of themselves are pretty all right. Boat bridges are sometimes more desirable given certain scenarios, but dock blueprints do have their uses. They're pretty good in scenarios where you would want to maneuver around a certain structure or object, such as big trees, or if you're close enough to one, sea stacks. Being able to walk over, get salt, makes getting salt such a easier task, especially if you're trying to repeat it. Let's say you're trying to spice something with Worley's salt powder. It is a lot more feasible for you to use salt and things like pierogi, which is pretty good. Monkey huts spawn monkeys, and they're kind of annoying to deal with. Because of the way monkeys spawn and then immediately go back into their hut, they tend to just refresh the entirety of their health, meaning you have to tank some hits in order to demolish the monkey huts just so that they don't get too annoying. Monkeys steal a ton of stuff and are annoying to deal with if you don't prepare properly. The big issue with monkeys in and of themselves is even if you kill them, you still have to deal with them afterwards because they drop trinkets that turn you into a wonky or at the very least, take up an inventory slot. Monkey tails are also pretty good. I feel like because you already have reeds in the swamp, having replantable ones is nice, but I wouldn't say it is insanely good. By and large, there are only a handful of characters that can really benefit from Monkey Tails being at base, and that's characters like Wanda with her Knight Armor, Wirt with her Merm Huts, and most notably, Wickerbottom with her books. But overall, I think the point at which you get a sizable amount isn't great for those characters, with the exception of maybe Wickerbottom, who definitely benefits more than the average character in regards to having steady access to easy reads. Then there's the cannons. So you get the cannon blueprint from giving bananas to the monkey queen whenever you don't have a trinket on you. And cannons are pretty good for destroying boats and dock, but other than that, they're not great. They're not really great in their offensive capabilities. Me personally, I will see them as nothing more than a tool. Palm cone are pretty good for wood. The big appeal to palm cones if you're farming them for wood is that they give one more log than a pine cone would. The issue is, you don't really get enough to make a sustainable farm. And what I mean by that is, you have to loiter around the portal for long enough to get them pretty early on. And by late game, typically you already have a steady way to get wood, such as Berger or Erms or whatever, what have you. And you've already set up a wood farm to where having another one would just kind of be redundant. However, you can choose to farm a handful of them, and the main appeal of palm cones isn't the wood. The main appeal is that you get the scales. Palm cone scales are used for docks, which are pretty good, as mentioned before. So the main reason that you farm palm cones, in my opinion, is for the docks themselves, in case you want to cover most of the ocean or just fill in gaps. 
The unnatural portal itself is where you get almost everything that I listed here. And the unnatural portal is great if you overcharge it. But the point at which you are able to do that yourself is too late in my opinion. I think if you're trying to force the unnatural portal to overcharge and spit out even more stuff so that you could just farm it to get all the resources that you would want in your base, you're already going to have moonstorms by that point. And if you're already having moonstorms and you've already done things like kill Crab King and you've already explored the archives, you've already cleared out the ruins at least enough to get yourself a star caller, you've already turned your star caller into a moon caller, deconstructed it. And by that point, I feel like you're already so into the game that the usefulness is a little bit questionable on when you get these resources. The Unnatural Portal also tends to spit out nonsense, in my experience. It spits out monkeys, it spits out rocks, it spits out grass. It spits out a lot of things that you don't really want. If you're doing something like Rushing Monkey Island, then it's a little questionable because of how RNG dependent the unnatural portal is at spitting its stuff out, but overall it's still an option. It's definitely worth checking out if only for a small amount of those resources because at least having the option available to you is pretty nice, but I wouldn't loiter around that place for an absurd amount of time to get like 40 monkey tails or get 40 banana bushes or anything crazy like that. To me it's just something that you stop by if you find it, because a big part about the monkey island is that you have no idea where it is. As of my recording this video, I have not seen any consistent or reliable way to tell where the monkey island is, and because of that, I think it is pretty difficult to rush unless you're on the ocean for the first, like, 10 days, maybe. And at that point, you could be spending your time elsewhere, and it's just a whole ordeal, in my opinion. In a multiplayer game, it's definitely worth at least checking out or at least trying to make an effort to, assuming that everybody is on top of things and doing their own thing and carrying their own weight and making up for you going out to this island to get the maybe get the resources. Things that aren't tied to the monkey island, but are just things that you can get in this update just through alchemy engines or think tanks or what have you. The nautopilot and the beacons are interesting. They definitely allow more room for things like cargo ships. I saw one video earlier that I will probably link either in the comments or the description if I tend to use the if I do choose to use the B-roll footage of somebody using the autopilot and the beacons to make a Ferris wheel around the entire map to make it I suppose easier in some ways a little maybe more time consuming depending on how efficient it is. But either way, the fact that you can make a ferris wheel to ferry you around the constant, around your map, is pretty interesting. At the very least, it's fun. The ocean trawler is fine for fishing, but the drawback is that it doesn't discriminate between fish. Which, if you're fishing for the sake of getting food and using fish recipes, then the ocean trawler is fine. You should probably have one set up, just because it's another food source that you can make use of. But for the big reason that I do fishing, which tends to be the sunfish and the ice breams, the issue is that the ocean trawler doesn't discriminate. So you can't say, okay, I want only sunfish and only ice cream. And because it only has about four slots in it, you can't really use it as a consistent way to farm those things. So I personally, as a wort player or wort secondary, if somebody who plays wort, somebody who uses these fish for thermals more than anything else, I personally am not going to use it just because it isn't selective enough, in my opinion. That being said, it doesn't need to be. You know, I think I think the ocean trawler is fine as it currently is. The rudder is fine for when you're decorating boats. I am a little upset about it personally because I was always a big proponent of maybe Winona should get a rudder type item so that she could make use of it and sail faster, but like be or hard to control or something like that. So having having a rudder incorporated in the game in a way that wasn't the way I envisioned is a little, little disappointing. But overall, I think the rudder was a good addition. I think because people tend to use boats for decorations and because people tend to want to angle their boats in a certain way, I think it's a fine addition. Not really much to say about it other than that. The grass raft is an interesting one. It's really good for rushing things like Lunar, 
It doesn't need a think tank, which I'm not sure if the normal boat needs a fish tank, but I'm pretty sure it does. But overall, I think I would rather just get a boat. The best way that I've seen a grass raft be used is people actually rush Monkey Island using a grass raft. They grab all the stuff that they want from that island, and then they go back on one of the boats that are already on that island. And I think that's a smart way to use it, because typically you want a round trip to and from wherever it is that you're sailing. But at the very least, a grass raft can be like an emergency. You know, it, it's something that you can fall back on at the very worst. The bandana allows you to manage your boat noticeably faster. If you're going to be attaching things like sails and anchors to your boat, it's definitely worth using a bandana while you're doing all that stuff. Because bandanas are just nice to have. Personally, oars tend to be my go-to, so it's a little disappointing to see that bandanas don't really provide any bonus, as far as I can tell, in regards to using oars. But it's a pretty good option if I ever do decide to put sails on my boat. Holly Rogers hat is an interesting item that they added. It's fine for picking things up, but the issue is that you're not able to discriminate on things that you want picked up. So it could be annoying for general usage. I can see it being really useful for things like when you're cleaning up your tree farm after bergers ran through it or whatever. It's definitely something that I think is going to see use, but once again, the point at which you get it in the game might hinder it a little. Being able to reach across those gaps in the ruins is definitely nice though. Overall, I think Polly Rogers hat is pretty nice. It's a pretty nice thing to have. Probably not something I'm going to go out of my way to use, but, you know, whatever. Moving on to the Captain's Tricorn. It has boat damage, which, it's kind of bad. I, I, I am of the opinion that the Captain's Tricorn is kind of bad, because how many times does your boat really take damage if you're sailing responsibly, I guess? If you're trying to get your sea legs, then I get maybe the Captain's Tricorn has its use. But at the same time, the point at which you get it, kind of questionable. Because, so the way you get it is the big downside. Because the way you get it is you have to kill a monkey captain. And that tends to be an RNG thing. It is pretty unlikely that you get this almost immediately. And the big reason that I'm making such a big deal out of how you get it and when you get it is because it requires you to already be sailing. And the benefit it gives, that being having the boat damage is something that kind of entails you not being that great at sailing just because if you're good at sailing then you're probably not going to take a lot of boat damage and you know the damage that you do take is going to be pretty small you could probably use like twigs to patch it up it might be pretty good for crab king assuming that it does something like have the damage from the flaws or something of that nature because just having longer boat life against crab king is pretty nice but I haven't tested it yet. If I do end up testing it before I put out this video, which I probably am, I'll be sure to include the recording of that in the B-roll footage right now. So you could be the judge of your, for yourself on whether or not it is worth it to you. The main reason that I would get the tri Captain's Tricorn is to make Polly Rogers hat. But other than that, I don't really see much use of her, uh, for it aside from the niche use of maybe fighting Crab King. The boat bumpers are something that got added in this game, and it falls into the same category as the Captain's Tricorn in my opinion. The fact that Rock Jaws can just break it immediately is really annoying and something that I really hope Clay changes. Overall, the their uses are kind of not great, because the primary reason that you would make one is as insurance if you're sailing. In my head, it makes sense that it works against Crab King, but once again, I haven't really tr tested the new update against Crab King, which, once again, if I do test it by the time I put out this video, which I probably am, I'll be sure to record it, put it in the background, all that fun stuff, and you could judge for yourself on whether or not it's good. But if the Captain's Tricorn and the Boat Bumpers work in the same way that I imagine they do against Crab King, they seem like pretty good options. And then, last but certainly not least, they added a new character. Kind of. Wonky is a whole can of beans in and of himself. You can override certain characters' downsides by being wonky, 
That includes things like really being able to eat foods over and over again without suffering from a downside. Also able to eat like raw foods and foods cooked over a fire and dried foods and things like that. Wirt is able to trade with Pig King while she's wonky. She could also eat meat. Same thing applies to Wigfred. She is able to eat vegetables. Maybe I'll make a future video on Wonky if I think it merits it. But as it currently stands, he is somewhere in between Wilbur in Don't Starve Shipwreck and just a normal character. The main appeal to being Wonky, I think, is the speed boost. Because after he runs for about three seconds, he will break out into a sprint. And that sprint will allow him will allow him to move faster than most characters. So overall, being wonky isn't a terrible hindrance. That being said, there's a reason that you're going to pick the character that you do in your character selection screen. But maybe you pick that character with the full knowledge that you're probably going to play through wonky. I don't know. He is very interesting. He is a very interesting character. I think the way that Clay implemented him was really unique and interesting. But overall, that's the Moon K Island as far as I can tell. I'm definitely looking forward to where they go in terms of the story and how they tie everything in to each other and how they go about updating the game from this point onwards. I think this update is fine. I think this update is fine. The reason I say fine and not like great is because this was impactful enough to make me think about what I want to do with this island and where it would go on in an ideal world gen, things of that nature. And it's definitely something that I want to consider whenever I'm making certain decisions, right? Whether it's worth it to get the captain's tricorn or make boat bumpers against Crab King, things of that nature. But something that I think is a sentiment echoed throughout this video is the rate at which you get them or the point at which you get them is questionable. Because going to Monkey Island is in and of itself a wee bit questionable. You know, you don't really get anything too special, but the resources you do get are things that typically are out of the way, as well as just being able to get boat docks and things of that nature. It's definitely worth exploring and visiting. It's not a biome that's going to go, like, completely unexplored or anything like that. But it's not something that I'm going to want to rush in the same way that, like, Lunar Island is going to be something that I always want to rush and that I always want to make it to whenever I, like, for the most part, start up a world. But I think that's fine. I don't think every update needs to be as big and impactful as the Lunar Island was and still is. I think it's fine if Clay puts out, like, updates that are impactful enough to where people would want to go visit it, but not too impactful to where it's another thing that you want to rush as soon as you spawn in. But yeah, that's what I think about this update. That's what I think about the things in this update. I think it's really fun, really interesting. Let me know what you guys think in the comments because I am genuinely curious in how other people incorporate this update into their playstyles, if at all. But yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about. So until next time, bye bye